ask questions. She comes I mean, uh, uh, for you. Yes, yes, it's uh, Vitaly. Vitaly asks questions uh, about four questions about yes. uh, foreign <laughs> debts, about health, about housing, uh, and so on. But let me say this first of all, on uh, debts. Um, in the last 10 years of uh, 13 years of democracy, Nigeria was able to exit the debt trap at a point where we owing about $35 billion to the Paris Club of, of, uh, of lending nations. Uh, we were able, because of our reforms and persuasion on the need to help the country develop its economy, um, we were able to exit the Paris Club of, of, of nations. We paid our debts. Uh, $18 billion was uh, taken off those debts, and we paid off the rest. And so today, the total debt quantum foreign debt Nigeria is only about $5 billion. And, and if you compare that to our foreign reserve for our capacity, it isn't yet a problem as far as external debts are concerned. Now, in the past, what led to those debts becoming a problem was that they were taken for things that were not productive. And they were not taken in particular by the, by the uh, everybody was coming out for debts, uh, state governments, local governments. And people were taking debts that were not invested in infrastructure, in production in things that will make those debts pay back. Uh, otherwise, every nation, every developing nation, even developed ones, are not free of debts. Um, it depends on our attitude to debts. I agree that our debts should not overwhelm our capacity to pay back. But what is most important, what is changing now, is that the new debts that government is arranging are going into the railways and are going into infrastructure that will pay back. They are private sector debts warranted by government because they are going to be given at lower interest uh, by countries that are giving those debts. For example, the Chinese Exim Bank will be negotiating debts to build modern railways. We're already building one between the standard gauge between Kaduna and Abuja. We have started the one that will come all the way from Lagos through Ibadan, Elorin, Mina, link up with the one from Abuja up to Kano. Now, those, those new projects are private sector projects, and they will develop infrastructure, they will modernize the country, they will generate the income, you know, because railway is a huge thing in Nigeria, a population of 167 million people. Uh, you can see the passenger outlay, particularly between the major cities. So we are now no longer taking government debts as it were, but they are private sector debts that are going to propel the economy. For example, now we are reforming the power sector. There will be companies that want to build their power plants. They want to build, generate their own power and transmission lines. Um, if those companies bring bankable projects that have been able to persuade their lenders and they want government to support them, because we have that infrastructure gap, government will weigh carefully the capacity of these companies and the business plan they have and support them. But this is not going to be a government debt like it used to be. People used to take debt for all manner of things, in including debt to, to buy uh, goods from abroad to go and distribute at home. Now that is gone. So I think, um, yes, we are constantly watching our debt ratio vis-a-vis -vis our GDP, our foreign reserves. And so far, uh, I can say clearly that Nigeria does not have a problem yet. As I can, we will not arrive at that problem because the plan on the ground now is to make sure we never arrive at a situation where we'll go back in, onto the debt trap. But we will borrow where we think is an opportunity to invest in the economy. We will do that. And that is exactly what government is doing, to expand the economy, to expand opportunities, and uh, those are debt being borrowed by investors, not directly by government. Government warranty because it's going to develop infrastructure gap in our country. So that is where we're heading to. Um, in relation to housing, um, we have just unveiled a new housing policy. We had a huge housing gap in the country for a long time because uh, of disruption in government policies. Don't forget, before the last 13 years, we never had a government that could carry on policy and give another because it's a coup that brings a government to power. When they, it, go, it goes, another coup disrupts and replaces everything they have done. Uh, in Nigeria was a theater where uh, men on horsebacks fought for power. Now with democracy, you now have systematic institution. You now have power moving from one hand to another. You have institutions that are guiding the process of governance and the economy. And so there is confidence. So you cannot have a policy that will move on no matter which government 
comes to power. And that one in the housing sector, we have just unveiled a new housing policy uh, which emphasizes private sector driven mortgage institutions that will work with government to create the kind of credit facility that will enable Nigerians to have long-term housing from mortgage companies. Presently, we don't even have a proper mortgage finance system. And that is the problem with the, with the housing sector. In the past, governments would build houses directly for people. And it never really worked because we knew that government resources were limited. But so long as there is a need, now we have modernized our pension system. There are pension companies. A lot of the funds is lying idle in banks. Now with a proper mortgage company with contribution from banks, with contribution from uh, pension companies and government, you can have a stable mortgage finance system that will enable people borrow money on a long term payback in 25 years with very, very low interest. And private companies can now buy, I mean, take, uh, make, uh, take advantage of this financial system and build millions of houses. So we now have also a social housing system that we're thinking of building several houses in partnership with, with, private, with uh, um, private mortgage companies. And I think uh, the problem has been a policy. Because when you have a policy where people, all the actors see an opportunity, you know, then there will be a lot of expansion, sustainable. So we are getting that done. I can't give you a deadline, but I am sure that this policy has been passed, and we, even the last Federal Executive Council, we discussed the question of this institution. So all these are being put in place. When the, maybe the next government uh, will have a different environment altogether, and the system will regenerate itself like you have in England, like you have all over the world where the, the mortgage sector is a, is a huge opportunity to create jobs. Because you, have cre you create more, more wealth and job opportunities in housing than most other sectors. So we're targeting this sector, and I believe that government policy there will produce the kind of results in the long run. On health, yes, I agree with you. We have challenges in the health sector, but also a lot of work has been done in the last 10 years, particularly in the last uh, two of President Goodluck Jonathan. We're investing a lot in revamping health infrastructure uh, uh, training institutions, uh, creating the kind of social intervention at the primary health sector, where the broad majority of the people depend on, particularly like the rural, uh, the rural and the urban poor. So we're creating that kind of intervention at the, at, but particularly at the state and federal level. But we're also looking at health at the global level. We are building tertiary health institutions, particularly teaching hospitals, and we're revamping them, standardizing them, so that most people who really uh, have real health challenges can be treated at home. But one thing that has been brought on board is to elevate private sector investment in the health sector. Uh, and a number of Nigerians and companies abroad are now looking at the opportunity to build uh, top level private hospitals in Nigeria uh, where we will have the opportunity to compete between the private hospitals and the tertiary government institutions like teaching hospitals. Mm -hmm. And a lot of progress is being made in the health sector. Professor Chuku, who is the Minister of Health, and, uh, and Dr. Patti, they are doing a great job in the health sector. Like I said, it's work in progress. We have not arrived there, but I see a lot of progress. Lastly, you talk about zoning. Um, we are very concerned about the debate in Nigeria. Even here, when we talk about the police, we were talking about SAP, not, and I was trying to dismiss that. From 1951 to now, Nigerian politics has been forced on ethnic alliances, region versus region, religion versus religion, tribe versus tribe. Now you and I must go beyond that. And the election of President Goodluck Jonathan is an affirmation that the people of Nigeria are no longer interested in where people come from, it, whether you have the right answers. And everybody in Nigeria has a right to rule. That is what we are saying. A number of us, north, south, east, west, we are saying that there of not we must go. Do you have the answers? Can the people of Nigeria, Nigerian voter, young, upward-looking people now, we have a president that gives results. So the zoning thing will die down, but there are still extreme forces who benefit on divisions. But the president and all of us are working towards a modern nation. Yeah, um, Honorable Mr. Sa, one minute to answer Azu. We've got calls waiting on the line. One minute to answer Azu. Yeah. Yes. yes, um Kola, just could you just anger one minute for yeah. the minister to just Azu, answer this Azu, question? Let me say this exactly. Azu, uh, I want okay, to sir, let, let me take this call. He's been hanging on. Okay, okay, go ahead and let's take your questions. Your name and where you're calling from. Turn down the volume of your TV set, please. Yeah, it's already turned down. Okay, go ahead I'm then. I'm from Verona, Italy. Okay, Verona, uh, okay. Uh, good day, honorable minister, please. 
Yes. You have not told us your name. Yeah. In fact, I want to really thank the minister for the way he's approaching issue. And I believe the president, Jonathan, is always doing this the way he's explaining. Because the little I've seen from the president, I think it is a very truthful president I've ever seen in Nigeria. Because I've seen so many things are changing. For example, this is the first time Nigeria, the, the, the INEC become independent, uh, become independent in Nigeria. That's right. Since ever, the INEC has not been independent. It has always been under a president. Exactly. So this is the first, uh, first and foremost, uh, congratulating, congratulating the president. Thank you. And uh, the, the president and the ministers. The, the second thing I want to really say, the first question is this. Uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Minister, please. Yes. Please, can you explain about security? And, uh, you know, since ever, Nigeria has not been able to control security. Because I don't believe that security can be controlled without knowing, uh, knowing the citizens, like giving a national ID card, which is very, very important to all citizens of the country. Because with a national ID card, we can be able to control every citizen where they are, computerized, and easy to monitor every citizen that are going on crime. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. I think we've got another call. Hello. Thank you for yes. Hello. Your name and where you're Hello. calling from. Yes. Go ahead. You're home. Your name. Hello. I'm calling from Spain. Your name. My name is Simeon. Simeon from Spain. Okay. Go ahead, yeah. Simeon. Yeah, please, my brothers and sisters who are listening all over the world, I'm just, I, I just try to ask the minister, you are a good minister. Please. Thank you. I'm in Nigeria, living in abroad for many years. <laughs> and I have seen the progress of other countries in many years. But whenever I come back to Nigeria, I see the downfall of Nigeria. I don't see the progress of Nigeria. But what, what, what is making me to feel appalling in Nigerian government is what are we planning for our youth today? And the, if any graduate come out from school, she stays six years, ten years without job. What are we making to make these students get a job to lift Nigeria up today? This is one of the things. If we want to take the progress of Nigeria, we must make our youth get employment in order to take away, in order to take from our old men to take, to take the, everything they left for us to continue. Another thing I want to ask you is, is you said you make it, you, there is a train from Lagos to Abuja, from Kaduna to Abuja, from the east down of Nigeria. I don't know people. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, very well, from Italy. Thank you, Vel, uh, from Italy Spain. for your call. From Spain, thank you. Um, well, I'm not sure me, if you have any call. Let me start with the last Minister, question. Minister, sir, yeah, because more minutes because of the time. Short, short answers? Well, yes. But, um, let, let me say this. Um, relating to youth employment, Femia will agree with me that in Spain today, majority of the people in Spain are not employed by the Spanish government. They're employed by private companies because the economy is open, because there are reforms, there are policies that expand the economy. Now, until we realize this dream, it has not been possible for years of military rule. Now the Nigerian economy is moving in the direction where the youth will have a future. And I've said it before, maybe you come onto the program, the kind of policies we are doing for employment, the direct public works program for government to employ as many youth as possible. Then the expansion in the economy that is taking place because we say we're growing 7.6% every year, and that economy is private sector driven, is non-oil sector driven. So in agriculture, in power, in telecoms, in cement and other manufacturing sector, we are going to see expansion. But it's policies that drive economic expansion. The attitude in Nigeria has always been that if I leave school, only government will employ me. At least 90 per 90 percent of those looking for jobs are eyeing government. 90 percent of people eyeing jobs in England, in Spain, and in EU are eyeing private sector. Now we have to change that, that story. And that's what the president is doing under the transformation program of economic reforms, such like witness in China from 1978, that is what we are doing at home. Maybe in another five, six, four, uh, ten years of elections, progress, reforms, our story will change. But we must patiently work hard towards that. And government is intervening at different levels to give our youths the hope for a new future uh, in the Nigerian economy. Now, as you spoke about image of Nigeria, I have not forgotten, and I like that question. Now. Um, our image is the collective 
responsibility of government, of Nigerian citizens at home and abroad, my first charge is that every Nigerian, wherever we are, we must behave well. We must show that we're serious people. We must show that we're trustworthy people, we're dependable people, we're bright, competent, and capable of competing on fair ground with everybody. Now, the attitude, the behavior of all our citizens is part of our responsibility. And for those in diaspora, my duty always as a minister of information is that you are our spokesperson abroad. When you do things well, it rubs on our image. Even if they hear negative stories and they see the bright way, the best way Nigerians are behaving abroad, they say, no, this is a good country. We cannot believe this is it. And secondly, at home, we believe the first charge is to run Nigeria well. The president believes that the best way to move, improve the image of Nigeria abroad is not to pretend. <laughs> Let us undertake those reforms at home that will give us better government if our elections are no longer rigged because the president has made it independent and elections are free and fair. Foreigners all over go to see Nigerian elections. They come back and say, well, this is a great, good election. It does a lot about the image of Nigeria. Now, if we are able to fight corruption and make sure that things happen at home in such a way that you can come from Spain, go and do business, come back without anybody charging rent, without anybody forcing you to do things that are beyond the line, that is a long way about the image of Nigeria. And our belief is that governance deficit is the major reason why our country uh, has poor image at, abroad. And so we are fixing those things, uh, proper governance, systematic way, great reforms at home, and also talking to Nigerians in government and out of government. Let us change our attitude to life. Let us see our country as the country of fourth choice in Africa, and that, that this country, which is a great country, we need to do our little best. As, 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 as for information policy, yes, we are working hard, for example, to reestablish all our uh, information, uh, uh, information centers in all our missions abroad, so that they can coordinate with the government at home mm -hmm. to make sure that you can go to any embassy uh, and go and take proper stories see reaction and hear the things that are happening at home, they can relate to you, you know, to give you information. Mm -hmm. We're also taking advantage of the social media such that because the world is a global village, we can relate to you. The Federal Minister of Information is developing a social media uh, um, framework to relate to Nigerians all over the world. We are doing that on Twitter, on Facebook, on, on our website. You get, you get to know what is happening at, at, at home. We step out occasionally to dialogue with Nigerians to let them know what is happening. So we're also, um, in the next year, as uh, more resources are available, we'll also go on a worldwide international campaign about Nigeria's image. But we don't believe that we can do this without doing things properly at home. So it's a whole program. The entire process of good governance in Nigeria ultimately will lift up the power that people now see as bad image of Nigeria. So we're working hard in this direction, and we'll be happy to hear your feedback, you can relate to us, bring suggestions. And they will also call on the Nigerian media because sometimes we Nigerians, we believe our country is the worst in the world. We desecrate our country, <laughs> we speak about it as if it's the worst country. I don't see Somalians come to attack their country even now, not Pakistanis. You know, Libya, Afghanistan, they don't come out to London to everywhere to abuse their country, even as serious as the problems in those countries are. But in Nigeria, we take, we compete with one another in abusing the country. And so when you hear people, so if you slander your country, who will not believe you? Everybody will believe you. So I think we must know that the challenges in the country are being faced. But we even discuss those challenges from the point of view of constructive uh, discussion that will lead to overcoming them. So I think these are some of the challenges we face. Some of the bad stories about Nigeria are ventilated by Nigerians themselves to other people who are onlookers. So I think we need to really work on that. So at the Minister of Information, we are doing our best, and we'll continue to do more by reaching out to you so that in partnership, we can improve uh, the, the image of our country. And I don't think that Nigeria is, Nigeria is a great country, it's a good country. People go from outside to Nigeria and say, oh, come on. The things we hear about your country, and see if everybody, <laughs> things are falling apart. When they come in and they go out, they say, wow, this is a warm country, friendly country, great people, welcoming. You know, so that is it. Most Nigerians are peaceful and good human beings. But the things we say about ourselves have given the world such a bad impression of us. And I pray that this will be the, will no longer be the case as we now see that what we say, what we do, rubs positively or negatively on the image of our country. Um, I think. Hello. Yes, um, we, we, we've got a call. Yes, um, I think this should be about the last call we'll be taking on the show today. Yes, your name and where you're calling from, please. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Your uh, name. My name is Sorry, your name my is. Name. 
Ezekiel. Yes. Ezekiel, turn down the volume. Ezekiel, turn down the volume of your TV set. Okay, please. okay, thank you very much. I'm calling from uh, Spain, yeah? From Spain. Yes. Mm, yeah. Okay. My volume, my volume. Okay, my, my question is to the minister is a, is a great minister, I think so. And uh, I hope they're doing a great job. Uh, the most important thing in life is to leave a foundation for your children. Amen. And me, as a man of my own age, and looking towards Nigeria to be a better country of mine Amen. and my home, Amen. where I can return whenever I come back from, Amen. and they are still relaxed. That's right. So uh, my, my next question is, uh, there is a rail from Kaduna to Abuja, from Lagos to Abuja, from the eastern side of it, there is no rail to Abuja. Are they not members of Nigeria? Are they not uh, in Nigeria? <laughs> <Are not? laughs> Ezekiel, okay. let me, let me oh, answer Ezekiel. you straight. Ezekiel, Thank you, Ezekiel. we are rehabilitating the entire rail network. We are right now rehabilitating the rail line from Portaco through Enugu, from Enugu to Makodi, from Makodi to uh, Lafia, Gudi, linking up to Meduguri and branching from Gudi to Abuja. Also, the east-to-west the east -west rail line is also a work in progress. There's another rail line from Ajakuta that is taking up all down to Ori. So I just mentioned an example. I didn't give you all the story about what we are doing, but the entire rail network is being done. For example, also dredging the Niger, you know, from uh, Ori right down through Onicha. We are building the Onicha inner city port, I mean seaport, almost finishing now. So a lot of infrastructure work. Is, we have just awarded the program for the design of the second Niger bridge that is going to link again uh, the east to west. Uh, around Onicha, uh, um, um, Asaba Axis. So a lot of infrastructure work is going on. I simply mentioned mm -hmm. the, uh, an example of what, uh, of the kind of projects we are doing. So Ezekiel, you know, I know you are from east of Nigeria, maybe, but I want to assure you <laughs> that the president is also from south-south. He's not from northwest. Okay. But the reality of it is we are handling this. I just mentioned that as an example. Okay. The work is more comprehensive than you that. You got the last call. Yeah. Sir, yes, yeah. your name and where you're calling from. Please turn down the volume of your TV set, please. Hello, are you there? Hello. Yes, go ahead, uh, your I'm name? Lord Lugia, calling from Italy. Okay, yeah. go ahead and make your point. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Minister. Thank you, my brother. Yeah, I uh, appreciate your effort. You are really speaking well. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, somebody called from uh, Italy, Verona, before. Mm. And it spoke on uh, security. Yes. The issue of ICT in Nigeria. What is my question?